Peculiars, Happy Yuletide and Winter Solstice. I'm Amanda, the Peculiar Brunette, and today I'm gonna to be doing my annual DIY Pagan Yule slash Winter Solstice DIY decor. I might need a like shorter name for that, but that's what we're doing today. I've got a couple projects. Of course, I'm gonna go ahead and do the Yule Log that I do every year, as well as a few other additional projects like that one there <laughs> and a few others that I hope you will love to do yourself. Before I jump into the DIY decor though, I do just want to say I am doing a giveaway again this year um, as a way to say thank you to everybody for being here. Um, so I'm doing two gift boxes. Um, it's going to be full of a few different items, um, some surprise things, but um, there's going to be an item that I DIY'd here in this video among a few other things. They're only going to be going to peculiars who are in the Magical Monday newsletter. So I'll put a link down below. Make sure you subscribe to the Magical Monday newsletter where we stay updated on all things peculiar. Um, I'll be doing the giveaway. I'll draw on December 18th, the morning of, so at 10 a.m. So as long as 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So as long as you are subscribed to the newsletter, you will be a part of it. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to draw two names and then um, I'll give each person two hours to respond back with their address. And if they don't, then I will draw another name. And again, they'll get two hours and we'll just go along. Hopefully though, they will respond right away so the winner can actually get their packages. So make sure you subscribe and I hope you win. And thank you again so much for you guys for being here. I appreciate you more than you really know. So let's go ahead and get started and let's jump in. So the first project is a really simple um, ornament. Basically, I got the idea because I was thinking about the way that Yule trees were traditionally celebrated. Um, so it was believed the evergreen tree had spirits that lived inside of them. That's why it would be brought into the home. Um, and, and that was kind of believed why evergreen trees were so everlasting. Um, so I liked the idea of creating a, an ornament that had a spirit living inside of it, a little fairy spirit that could be kept on the tree. This one's super simple and easy. I would recommend not using a glass ornament. Um, the one that I use is a plastic ornament that's from Michaels and it's a little bit larger than your average ornament. Um, and so it has a larger hole at the top, which if you use a smaller one, I honestly don't. It was kind of hard to do this with the larger hole. I don't know how you would do it with a smaller one, but I had a really good time doing this. And if you make one of these, I would love to see your variation on it because this was just such a fun project. If I was to do it again, I would probably try using one of those um, open, I think they're called like air plants that they put in them. And it's an open, um, like glass, I don't know what you call it, like an open glass container that you can hang for air plants. And I think that would be really fun because I feel like you could get a lot more elaborate with what you put inside the glass ornament. So um, if you give it a try, let me know. Um, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how I made it.
next project that I did, um, I really wanted to kind of add some more like nature slash organic kind of woodland vibes to my decor. Um, so I really wanted to include mushrooms in my tree. That's kind of been a trend I've seen around for a couple years, but I didn't have any and I couldn't find anything that I liked. So I wanted to make my own. Um, I'm gonna show you, I got a bunch of pictures of the mushrooms I wanted to incorporate. Um, and so I could kind of get an idea of what exactly they all look like and kind of the variations on them. So I'll put that up here so you can see that. Um, I attached mine to like clips on the bottom um, so that it could kind of like clip onto the tree branch um, and then sit up on top of it, which was really fun. I love how it turned out. Um, as I was making it, I saw on TikTok that Brooke Darwin made some similar mushrooms but she actually put a like hook at the top so that you could loop it through an ornament and then like hang it off the branch which i thought was a cool variation on it so i'll link her TikTok down below so that you can take a look at that if you're interested um, otherwise let's jump in and i'll show you how i made it
popular pins on Pinterest has been the DIY crystal ornament that I did in 2019. And you guys really loved adding the quartz crystals into the Yule tree. So I wanted to kind of do that again. I did a little bit of a variation on it by adding, I still added the clay. I definitely used a lot of clay and Sculpey clay in this in this video, but it just came in so handy. I just couldn't help it. Two different types that I put in this video, citrine ornaments. Now, they do kind of look like they're potentially the amethysts that were heat pressurized to look like citrine. So I don't think they're actually citrine, but I was really going for the color, um, that bright orange I just thought was really beautiful to represent the sun. Um, and place in your tree and the way that I did it I think it looks like a really cool geode and um, they may or may not be in uh, the giveaway boxes hint hint but and I also did one where I kind of made a more personal one that is with an amethyst and I really liked the idea of using amethyst in the tree um, because amethyst is a really personal stone for me one it's because it's my birthstone and two because I love the like, it's always like a really spiritual stone for me, really connected to like the spiritual realm and like my ancestry that it's personal to me in that way. Um, so I want to include it in my tree. And so I hope you like these videos and I hope that this inspires you to make your own. This, this tree topper was by far the most difficult project that I made. There were several times where I was just gonna scrap it and be done with it because it was just so frustrating. When you make your own crafts from scratch, you're trying to pull it out of your brain into real life. Um, there's no directions to follow. There's no you know, one to tell you like, oh, this is how you should do it. And I basically wanted to give up and murder someone. But I really wanted to create this. I've had this in my head for a few years. Um, and I kind of just wanted to tell you the backstory behind it a little bit before I jumped into the project. So when I was little, my sister and I had this holiday tradition 
where we would get up really in the early in the morning on the weekends when my parents were still asleep and we would eat cinnamon pop tarts and we would sit beneath the holiday tree and we always had an angel on top of the tree because um, I grew up in a Christian home and we would always look up at her and we would talk and we would laugh and we would create like wonderful sisterly love memories and we would talk about how the angel was protecting us and protecting our home for the holiday season and it's just this like wonderful memory <clears throat> wonderful memory for me with my sister um that's just very special to me and i struggled a lot um, as i got older and really put aside a lot of my christian beliefs and started the process of deconstructionism um, and into more my paganism beliefs. And it was really hard for me to let go of the angel. So I did buy a cheap angel from like Walmart cause it was like dirt poor when I was like 18 or 19, moving out on my own. And it was just like a cheap Walmart one. It was kind of ugly, but I just really wanted that connection with my sister that was on top of my tree. And that angel lasted me for quite a while. I kept it for quite a few years until it finally, like all the lights died on it. And so then I was like, well, what do I do? I really don't want to buy another, like an angel, but I didn't want to let go of that tradition. And so I went to Hobby Lobby, I know, ugh. And I got this angel there that was kind of like a rustic looking angel. And I thought, oh, well this will be cool because she's kind of pagany looking. And I put her on top of the tree and I just never liked her. <laughs> I just could never really connect with it. And she had no lights on her, so it was like this big dead space. It would like kill all the light that was coming out of the top of the tree. Um, and I just never liked her. I could never bond with her. And I've had her the last few years, but I hardly ever put her up. I kept thinking about that idea of the angel and the protection of our household. And I really wanted to incorporate that idea. Um, so my dad and I, other side story is that when I was seven, my dad took me out. My dad's a huge hunter. I grew up hunting with him a lot, which I attribute to my love of nature so much because I learned so much. And this moment was particularly special because it was our first time and we shot a like fork at horn. And you've probably seen him in some of my intro videos. And I didn't want to use those actual antlers because they're really special to me and I want to keep them you know, in my sacred space or altar. Um, but I wanted to kind of recreate them for the top of this tree because I didn't want them to be these like huge, massive, like rack. It's just really special to me. And it was totally a pain in the butt <laughs> to make. And if like you guys try it, I would really love to see it. I would, my one recommendation is it's really light until you start adding the floral to it. The floral stuff makes it a little bit heavier. So, the lighter that you can find on the faux greenery, the better, because it'll help. You can see it's leaning just a slight bit um, on top of the tree. I can finagle it a little bit and make it straighter, but that would be my one tip for you. So sorry for the long story. I just wanted to explain why this one's so special to me. So let's jump in and I'll show you how to make it. So I learned this trick a long time ago um, when I was trying to make a wire bouquet for my wedding. But it basically, if you take wire and you want to spin it around itself, it's so much easier to put at the end of a drill. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that here. You want to remove the drill bit so you can insert the wire. And obviously make sure and use common sense and safety. Hold one end very tight with a pair of pliers or something that basically will hold it stable because it would hurt your fingers if you held it with that. And then you can just 
press the drill and it'll wrap that wire. So this is when all the troubles started on these antlers. So I ended up paper macheing them with Mod Podge and paper towels. You can feel free to paper mache them however you choose. Um, but then I just could not get those two prongs to be very secure inside of that styrofoam ball. So I decided I wanted to use some of the Sculpey clay to add to the base of the antlers to help it really stick to that styrofoam ball. Um, but unfortunately because you have to bake it, it, I wasn't sure how it would turn out with, since it was already paper mache. Um, it, it turned out being fine actually, but it reeked and stunk up my whole house. So if I were to do it again, I would recommend, um, doing the clay before you paper mache it and then going from there. Another failed attempt I had was trying to use the clear gel tacky glue. It just did not work, it didn't want to stick, and I would not recommend doing that. And at this point, I really wanted to just pull my hair out, but my husband came up with a great idea where he said that I should actually cut out holes into the styrofoam so that the clay would have a really great secure place to attach that was like actually embedded in the styrofoam ball. And that worked out perfectly. I ended up using hot glue to secure it, I was a little bit worried about doing that because I was afraid it would melt the styrofoam ball, but I did it in phases and it foamed a little bit, but it ended up working perfectly.
Okay, and so the last one is, of course, the Yule Log, which is my favorite one to do, and I love sharing it with you guys every year. Um, this one is gonna look a little bit different because this year I decided to do it with my husband. Um, I did one side of the Yule Log and he did the other side, and we weren't allowed to look at the other person's side while we did it, so it was kind of like this weird surprise as to what they came up with um, and the symbolism that they put on their half. Um, I told him it was fine if he messed it up too much. I'd pull a Monica and just, you know, turn it around so nobody could see the side that he did. <laughs> but um, it was kind of fun. Like I said, this video looks a little different. I had so much fun doing it with my husband this year. I would definitely recommend doing this with your husband, spouse, kids, or loved ones because it's just such a good time. I burn my Yule log on New Year's Eve every year. This year I was thinking about maybe doing a live stream while I did it and I thought, I don't know, I thought it could be kind of fun and I thought, you know, I always release any like manifestations or intentions, we write it on paper and then we release it um, for the next coming year and I thought it might be kind of fun if you guys joined in too and you could tell me any um, intentions that you wanted to release and I could write it down and put it into the Yule Log as it burned. But I don't know, if, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. If not, that's cool. I can just do it with me and my husband, it's fun. So let me know, I'm really interested to see what you guys think. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and we can check out how we made the Yule Log. I hope you guys loved this video. I hope that you guys have a wonderful holiday season. I'm sending you so much love. And yeah, remember, as always, stay peculiar. It's me, Amanda, the Peculiar Brunette. Nope, I didn't like that. So I also wanted to, mm -hmm. so the next product, so the next project. What you doing, Gozer? Hmm, you just hanging out on the heater vent? What a great plan. It's 
a really good spot, bud. 